welcome to the Arena Podcast. My name is Emily. I'm Roz. Uh, and this is episode number 17. Um, we haven't been here for a little while due to various things, most, mostly health and a little bit of snow. Um, it snowed two weeks ago? Two weeks ago yep. for the whole weekend. And it's snowing again today. So we're not used to snow in the UK, so everyone went a little bit snow crazy. crazy. Yeah. But it's brilliant. I love the snow. I love the snow until I have to get somewhere. I don't like it so much. Because I will, it probably isn't going to be a snow day for work tomorrow. It means I'm going to have to get to work at 7 o'clock in the morning in the snow. So that'll be fun. I'll uh, look forward to that. Okay. Right. So, go on, you do your thing first then. Uh, right, we had a question from... I'm assuming it's Cat is Crafty and not Cat is Crafty. Or, I don't know that. You could pronounce that a lot of ways. I'm assuming it's Cat is Crafty asked us, how long have we both been knitting? Would you like to answer that question? Sure. Um, I learnt to knit when I was seven. My grandma taught me. And she's now 407, yep. so that was 400 years ago. Indeed. My grandma <laughs> taught me how to knit and she gave me some needles and some yarn. And so I have always known how to knit since I was seven. Um, I did it on and off for a little bit, but not really a huge amount. And then a few years ago... I started back up again. I can't remember the first thing that I started. I did some socks. This was probably 2012, I think. Was 2011. it the socks stuff? No, that wasn't the first. <clears throat> that wasn't the thing that started me back up. I'd already knit like socks and hats oh, okay. and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and then I did it ever since, really. I think you started knitting more since we got together. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe more regularly, but I had, like, I was already streaming my knitting yeah. stuff on Twitch and I was doing socks and hats and all that kind of stuff. I'd done two Doctor Who scarves that were both ten foot long. Um so I was I was fairly prolific in the knitting I think. Mm. I wasn't watching any knitting podcasts, but I did watch a lot of Twitch knitters. Um who are still around. I don't do it anymore because I don't have the time now I have a job. But yeah, that was a really good community to be part of. <clears throat> so I think I started, it must have started back up again around 2012. Yeah, 2012 it must have been. Yeah, just got some stitches. Oh dear, this has all gone wrong. I would tell you how long I've been knitting, but I've, oh no. Not long enough, by the looks of it. <laughs> oh no, it's all gone wrong. Oh dear, right, I'll just put that down. And pretend I'm, I didn't even want to knit. Um, is, this, is this what you're going to do for the rest of the podcast now? You're just going to sit and hold your collapsed knitting? I'll, I'll fix it while you talk again in a minute. Okay. okay. Uh, unless you want to tell people how long I've been knitting. <laughs> Ros has been knitting um, since 1843. <laughs> she started uh, when she was taught by um, the Grand High Wizard, um, who taught her how to knit uh, because he wanted socks. I think it might have been Dumbledore. Um and then she was put to work in the knitting workhouse uh, and was ordered to knit 15 pairs of socks an hour, which obviously, you know, worked your fingers to the bone. Yeah. Um, and so uh, here she is now, really. It's a sad story. Yeah. But... I have now fixed my knitting, though, so thank okay, you. Okay, good. <laughs> Do you want to tell the actual story of how you started knitting? Yes, I started knitting in the summer of 2009, just after I graduated from university. And... I sort of made my mum teach me how to knit because she taught me once before and it hadn't stuck but I I somehow knew I really wanted to knit so I got her to show me again and one of the first things I made was this year blanket out of some oh you're sitting on it yeah well that's because it's on the sofa <laughs> I didn't realise you were going to do a show and tell well, I would okay. have prepared adequately there's three you can sort of see a light brown a dark brown and a sort of purpley lilac colour that's just some acrylic that we bought from the nearest shop that sold some wool well some acrylic and uh, so it, it's it's a fairly old blanket and I once washed it and then tumble dried it and that made it I believe the technical term is enormous <laughs> uh, and it was used for a dog blanket for a while but now it's it's hanging around on the back of your sofa and I don't it know is. that we've ever used it as a blanket oh yeah oh okay it still works as a blanket even after the 
Yeah, I can't recommend tumble drying an enormous amount of wet. I'm alarmed that you've, give, that, you've, that you've given me your ex-dog blanket, though. That is slightly upsetting. It's been washed, <laughs> it's been washed again since then, and, you know, we love <sighs> that dog very much. Ugh. He was, a, you know, a part of the family. Okay. And, yeah. I, I let dogs sleep on my bed. That, a blanket goes on the bed. It's all fine. <laughs> it's been washed. It's very clean. Okay, well, that's good. Okay, um, uh, yeah, that is about eight and a half years I've been knitting. And, um, you know, it's just got worse from the blanket, really. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out I'm doing the right thing. Um, it looks like you're knitting. Okay. Right. You I hope that answered needle. your question. It probably didn't because it was a bit random. But what did you, what did, what else did you do after you did your blanket? What was your first, like, clothing item? Um, does anybody, just going off on a tangent slightly, does anybody else with long hair have this same problem where you have to keep pulling your own hair out of your knitting? Uh, yes. I am, ha yeah, it happens a lot. Yeah. I keep knitting my own hair into my stuff. I think you just have to give up and accept that, that the hair is part of the knitting now. Yeah, I don't know about that. I find that I have that problem with specifically your hair in my knitting because your hair is a lot longer than mine. Yes. I pull it out if it keeps coming, it's ends hair. Yeah. It stops after a bit, it's like, oh, that's not mine. Anyway. Um, we have a giveaway. We have a giveaway, yes. We have a few entries on our giveaway, and it is for some down sheepy lane sock yarn from the Stephen King Sock Yarn Club and all the little accoutrements that it comes with. Um, this, I can show you what it looks like knit up now, because I've knit, knit it, my, well, some of mine. So it's this. If you hold, if you hold, I will. Hang on, I've got a whole bunch of there. So it's from it's this lacy bit here and this colour up here. So sort of this section is made from the yarn that is the down cheapy lane yarn that we're giving away. It's kind of a red colour. So this this bit here. Um, and we're giving away one of her sock yarn sock uh, yarn club, Stephen King and Yarn Club sets from uh, a couple of months ago. That is, will go to a lucky podcast viewer. So. Um, if you want to enter, please go to our Ravelry group and you will be able to enter on the thread for the sock yarn giveaway. And I reckon we'll probably pull that in an episode or two. Yes, I think. We were hoping for 10 entries, but given how many we've got well, now, sorry, we can leave it going for a little bit. Yeah, it depends. So at the moment, rough. your odds are quite good. So enter the competition. Yeah. I'm still pulling my own hair out of my anyway. Anyway. Okay, when you wear it, you're going to get your hair on it anyway. I know. I think this idea of it being hairless is... Futile. Impossibly high standards. Right. Do you want to talk about some knitting or something then? Uh, yeah, actually no. First, I want to say we've now got more than 100 subscribers. Oh, we have. And we've got our own like URL that is memorable, as in it's words and not just a random jumble of letters. Not that you'll care, because you don't need it, because you're already here. So, yes. you know. But we appreciate it, and thank you for subscribing. Yes, we hit 100, so that's quite cool. Yes. We've, we're over 100. We've got 100 people who are not you and me or my mother. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's true. 100 people we're right. not related to. We've been speaking for like nearly 10 minutes. We haven't even gone to the knitting stuff Okay, yet, so I'm sorry. We get wiggle on. Okay. Do you want to start with your work in progress? Um, your hairy work in progress? Yeah, go on then. Um, so, I've been pretty knitting monogamous. It's because I have like um, obligation knitting that I have to do, so I'm putting it off. <clears throat> Um, and I'm doing my Find Your Facial, which I hadn't even started. In fact, I hadn't even got all the yarn for when I um, when we podcasted last. Do you know what? On a tangent. The last time we podcasted was our Unravel haul. Yeah. And that Unravel was at half term. And now we're like a week away from the Easter holidays. That's how long it's been <laughs> since we've actually podcasted. Well, anyway. <clears throat> I feel like that is... Um... The fault of Easter being quite early. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and I'm slackness in podcasting. But also, you know, Easter. Yeah. I am knitting the Find Your Facial. It's an Andrea Mowry pattern, which is very popular. Like a million billion people have knit this and it's it's a very popular pattern. Um, I have got quite far on it because it's pretty much all I've been doing. And so I will show you now. Um, yeah, last time we podcasted, I didn't even have the yarn. And now I do. And I've changed my colours slightly. So 
This is what I've done so far. So I'm hang on. Look, I'm halfway through a row, so I can't even like hold it in at once. Do you want to hold that and I'll hold this end? All right. <clears throat> oh, that's better. Right. Oh, look. Hang on. No, bring it across to you because I want to... There we go. Right. Okay. Where's the bottom corner? You don't know. Sorry. No, that's this side. Okay, so it is the right way up as well. Okay. Hey, that looks... No, bring it up oh. towards you because I want to look at the colours. That, that looks pretty good. Yeah. And yeah, we go that. this way a bit. And you nice. Can see it. Yeah, you can I see like all it. of them now. Right. So, starting at this end, we yeah. have... This is the Anti-Valentine colourway by Strand Dye Works. It is a uh, soft yarn. And it's very lovely. And then we blend that into this colourway, which is a bright pink, and it is a one of a kind from uh, Snuggly Stars Yarns because I've got the card thing up on my thing. And then we go this way slightly, and this is um, the red, which is the Christine. Stephen King Sock Yarn Club one that you could win. That you could win. So that's this sort of red colour here, and I'm just. You can see up here, I've just started putting in the next colour, which is uh, this one. This one here. And this is one from Unravel, and that is the West Green Loft Yarns uh, Vintage Peony in Merino. And so, I've had a little bit of a change for colours, for various reasons, um, because I got this month's sock yarn club and i was like oh if i change my colors i could put it in and then i'd have all my yarns and that'd be good so after that one i'm doing this one which is fine fish yarns which i originally bought to make a pair of socks out of but it's going in the shawl so it'll fade from this one into this one because they've got kind of both a pinky thing and that'll get a bit darker and then the last one but i'm not going to show you that yet because i'm going to talk about that in my stash enhancement so i'll show you the last one uh, later but um it's the most recent Stephen King Sock Yarn Club one, and it, yeah, it'll look really nice. I'm really pleased. It goes from like a really dark pink and a black, and then gets pinker and redder and goes all the way up to sort of a lighter pink, and then yeah, yeah. I'm really not. I, I've not seen it look quite like that before. I'm quite impressed with myself. I, I have to say, with my mm -hmm. colour choices. Now I see it. It's yeah. like a long, elongated triangle. It's difficult to see. So if you Hold that up, you can see, let's go towards you. Oh. So that's like the bottom, it comes down like this, and that's the bottom point there. Um, and then it will go along the top into like a big triangle. You can kind of, put your end down a bit, there you go, you can kind of see how it will go. There's the bottom point, yeah. Um, that's it so far. Oh, I'm suddenly very impressed with my <laughs> ability to shawl. Is well it done, getting me. smaller now then? Um, yeah, what will happen is it stays the same number because it's quite strange. The way the pattern goes is, so that's the bottom corner there. Yeah. And it finishes, it's difficult to show because I can't get the things up that way. It finishes, the last block is just a block. It's not a, a V like yeah. the rest of the ones have been. <clears throat> I think I can show the picture without giving away the... So on here, yeah. you can see all the different sections. I don't know if you can see it. No, you can't see it at all. <laughs> no, you can't see it at all. Oh, it's even changed. But all the different sections go together, and then the last bit that you do is like a block. Is that one? Yeah. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> I can see. Yeah. But you'll see. It's going to be yeah. finished in the not-too-distant future, I imagine, which is good, because it's still cold, and I could still use it. Although, you know, it's a yeah. seems to be an all-weather shawl. Yeah. Pretty impressed with my yeah. colour choices there. Points for me. It does look nice on screen. It does. Is, you know. Not that it doesn't look nice in real life. But the colours are really good. Things ah. don't show up so well. I'm just going to hold this up for the rest of the podcast. Because, you okay. Because it's so pretty. Anyway. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've been wearing it like a big Gandalf beard occasionally. Yeah. Because it goes down like this in the middle. You can wear it like this. Yeah. It was quite effective when you just had the... Yeah, when I just had bit. the bottom bit and it was just a tiny... Well, just like a regular size gun yeah, it, it looked, you know, more normal. But that has been pretty much all I've knit on for the last... And it's taken me... Um, well, the last... The whole of the last colour took me a week. Because last Saturday I was working on this lace bit here, which is the colour before. And then yesterday I got to change to this one. So the whole of that red section, which is like that much here, took like a week. And now the rows are getting shorter? They're staying the same size at the moment. Okay. Um, and then they will start shifting about. Yeah. It's 
so it shouldn't take you too much longer to do your next. No, because as you go up the colours, it gets you need more and more and more, and in the last two you need like less than less again. Yeah. So the, the amount you need to get smaller on the last couple of colours, so it just gets shorter. But it's dead easy though. It's such a good pattern because it's really easy to memorise, and as long as you just keep an eye on whereabouts in the pattern you are, you don't have to sit and follow every stitch. You just kind of have to know roughly where your whereabouts you are, so you can change your stitch counts at the right time to get the right shape and put your colours in at the right time. Yeah, cool. That's it. That's all I've got for work in progress. Oh. Well, I have other works in progress, but I've done flip all on them, so showing them would be completely pointless. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am working on this jumper, which is my second go at the flax jumper by Tin Can Knits. It's the same yarn, well, different colour, but the same yarn as my first go. It's the Giant Balls of Albie Aaron. Well, Aaron from Albie. It's called So Crafty. This is navy blue. Uh, I finished the body and one sleeve. And I marked all my decreases to make it easier to count them. And I just started on the second sleeve. And I tried it on when I finished the body and when I finished the first sleeve and I think it's going to be a bit uh, more fitted well it is going to be a bit more fitted than my first go because I'm knitting it on a whole needle size smaller well a half a millimetre smaller needles um, knitting it on four and a half instead of five millimetres which I knit my first one on and it was a bit big so hopefully this one well it should I've tried it on and it fits so far, so I don't see how putting another sleeve on is going to make it either incredibly baggy or too short or too long or anything like that. As long as both your sleeves are the same length. Yeah. I mean, that's where you might run into a problem if you've got one that comes to your knees and one that comes to your elbow. Well, again, I'm going to, shortly, it'll be time to start the decreases and I'm going to take the uh, clips and pins and things oh, from okay. here to the other one as I knit it. Okay. And then, yeah. As long as I start decreasing in the same place I should be fine because I'm just following it up or down. Why did you realise that my needle was one? <gasps> oh no we forgot to put the re up. Oh. Scandal. Oh no. Oh well. Never mind. <laughs> look 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 if you stay exactly where you are that works. What? Knit. <laughs> Knit. <sighs> yeah. Oh well. It's you know who we are. Good grief. Yeah. It's, it's my job to put the, the re up and I forgot. That's all right. I'm sorry. You know who we are. They're on our, our YouTube page. They're watching yeah. our YouTube channel. Yeah. You know you know what the deal is. Yeah. How this works. Right. So that is my first work in progress. My second work in progress is my colour work mitt, which I've been working on for ages. But no, this is the second one because look, one's already finished. Ooh, very nice. See, that pattern shows up nicely on the camera as well. Hey. Must be the lighting. I, don't, I think it looks better in the kitchen. <laughs> You're just going to have to stand and wear your mitts in the kitchen. Well, the, the light I have like... really nice mitts. Come to the kitchen so I can show you. Uh, well, they look uh, they're quite good. pretty good. Uh, the light in the kitchen is very white. Uh, and in here it's in a sort of uh, slightly beigey uh, lampshade. So it makes it look a bit less bright white. But yeah, this is a uh, mitten I knit out of, well, I'm knitting two out of three mini skeins of Little Grey Sheep's Hampshire four ply in Bulrush, Columbine and Charcoal. And each of my little bits of ribbing is a different colour. And yeah, it's a colour work pattern of my own uh, design. Yeah. These uh, here are some squares, and then there are these which I was intending to look like bobbins, but they look more like an empty bobbin. They look more like a capital I, and then these bits were supposed to be this little blue vase that we have on the shelf behind us. Oh, but um, it's yeah, and then these are just some V's, and this looks a bit like um, film reel, you know, film tape thing. Film. Yeah. Film, yeah. It's just film. That's <laughs> what it is. Uh, you know, from the Yodi movies. Well, I do. The film still on film? No, okay. It's digital. Okay. 
when the films were on film. That's what I look a bit like. But yeah, no, no, it's just twisted ribbing for the ribbing. Yeah, so this this mitten is uh, it's it's soft, but it's not like super soft. But it is it's got a sort of sturdiness to it. It's not all floppy and. I feel, you know, I have confidence in this mitten's ability to, you know, stand mm. up to some snow and bad weather. Now that'd be nice and warm because of the colour work. I'll flip it inside out and you can see on my flint. I do like, I do like a nice look at somebody, at people's floats. Because I think, it, you know, you can sort of see the colour work in reverse, kind of. And it's just, yeah. It's quite satisfying. I think it's like a knitter's thing. I think if you don't knit, you don't care. Or maybe if you do knit, you also don't care. But I quite like looking at floats. So it is. And those are all my works in progress. Cool. I realise that my spinning is over there. Ah. You're going to go and fetch it. Cool. Do the magic of television. I had a finished object that I'd forgotten, as well as forgetting to pick up my spinning. So I'm doing really successfully with the whole broadcasting thing. I finished my jumper which I'd forgotten because it was ages ago. It was like first snow <laughs> was when, when I finished it. So here's my jumper. It's from the Knit Knitwear Love, is that yes. what it is? Book by Amy Herzog. Yes. Um, and this is the classic casual, can't remember. Classic pullover. I classic think. pullover. Don't look at the pattern too closely because you can see where I've gone wrong. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it had like, oh, it has arms. So that's exciting. Um, and like a front and a back, so I don't get cold. <laughs> um, it's a, it's it's a interesting shape. Yeah, it's quite good. It, I think it's the shape it's designed to be because it's designed to be a bit shorter in the body and a bit longer in the arms, um, because it's supposed to be a bit more of a fitted sweater. I love the arms. The arms are exactly the right length, and I love the big cuff on them because they're just they're yeah. I like the arms a lot. And actually, I quite like the body as well, but because it's a bit shorter, it doesn't um, sit quite as low down, obviously. Um, but what it is, I think the shape of the body, I think I should have done a bit more shaping because um, because it needs to be quite wide at the top. It means that it's quite wide at the bottom, so it doesn't it doesn't fit quite as like shape. It's not as shaped at the bottom, so it's quite baggy. What well, Emma's trying um, to delic delicately say is she has quite big boobs. Well, <laughs> what I'm trying to say in knitting parlance is that the bust shaping needed to be brought in a little more in order to make sure that I properly had an adequate shape for the lower part of the torso. Okay. Um, because uh, going by the pattern in the book, it doesn't account for such shaping. I see. Um, but I do like it and I wore it for my Mrs Weasley outfit for World Book Day which lasted for two and a half hours and then we got sent home because it was snowing so it did get a a wearing and it's nice it looks really good with a dress yeah um and I like it it's nice and warm it's also really funny when she's wearing it and she puts her arms up because the whole jumper shoots up yeah it's and a short you can jumper. see your midriff or you know what's under yeah well as I say I mean, it only comes down to like my waistband so yeah. that's what it's gonna do but that's okay. I'll wear it with a... It looks much nicer with a dress anyway. It's a nice colour. I like the colour a lot. So, yeah, I'm pleased with that. Do you want to say what the yarn is? It's Stylecraft um, Special DK, I believe, in some kind of copper. I think it's just copper. Yes. Um, yeah, but jumper. So I've mm. now got two finished jumpers, which is exciting. Hooray! And when I finished my shawl and my obligation that's in knitting, that is, I'm now two months behind on. <laughs> Um, I can start my boxy, which will probably kill me, because I, it's 15 inches round, I believe, Yeah. Um, in four ply, uh, three and a half inch, uh, three and a half inch, three and a half millimetre needles, I think, in 50 inches round, and it's all stocking it from waist to up here. Okay, I just want to point out that my bust measurement is more than 50 inches, so you know. Every time I knit a jumper, I have to knit more than 50 inches. Around. Yes, but not like all the way down to your hips. No, my hips are wider than my bust. No, I know, <laughs> but it's not like you're knitting 50 inches all the way down. There's like shaping. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, well, you're saying that the lack of shaping is what's going to bore you. Well, it's just going to be round and round and round and round and round and round and round. Yeah. 
so it's going to take a while. Yeah. But yeah. Hopefully it will go fast. And it's pretty young. Anyway. So that's my finished object that I'd forgotten I had. Yeah. I've finished no objects. I'm sorry. Uh, you count shall like we... one of a pair of mittens. But I have two hands. So yeah. No. So it's, it's a home. It's a half object. Okay. Well, let's not be rude. Uh, right, should we do spinning? Yes. Do you want to do your spinning first, seeing as I just did my jumper? Okay, I've done a fair amount of spinning. I have spun this yarn, which I think I was in the middle of spinning in the last podcast, or the podcast <laughs> before that. It is my extra fine merino from Hilltop Cloud that I got as a Christmas present from my parents. Sort of purpley with sort of slightly grey brownie purpley shades in it and it was 100 grams and I've made it into a three ply yarn and this skein and my two little baby skeins which That's were skeins. the leftovers that you've been chain plied so they're sort of Baba skeins. Yeah. Mm. each ply on this is the same colour whereas here you can see the plies have got different colours in each strand and yeah, together they're just over 400 metres. So I've got 400 metres from 100 grams. So that is, you know, proper like sock weight knitting. And I think that's about what the, uh, the thickness of the yarn is as well. So I'm pretty pleased with that. This is going to go, I think, with some other skeins of merino to be a, a stripey slash colour worky jumper thing which will depend on which other colours I spin up and when I've spun them up and stuff but yeah there should be maybe six so maybe five more hundred grams of merino to spin it took blooming ages because spinning that fine and also it's plumped up a bit so it was even finer it's taken me since about January to spin it but I'm very pleased with the effect and it's pretty even as well because it was short draw. My other spinning is a purchase from Unravel. This is John Arben uh, Merino Schwartz. Yeah. It's it's written Zwartbles, but the Dutch pronunciation I was told by a friend at Spinning Guild last week is Schwartble, which I think means white blaze. I think it's like the sheep has got like a, a white bit, like on a horse, but on a sheep. This was fun long draw from the fold. This is about 115 grams of 65% uh, merino, 35% joie balls, and I've got about 175, 180 metres of a three ply sort of double knit Aran ish thickness and again this is going for a different jumper with I got uh, about nearly 700 grams of fibre from John Arben at Unravel so I'm going to spin these the same way I'm going to spin the rest of them the same way I've got uh, this and a really this is kind of a blue green and I've also got a green green I don't know that I could, well, I could put them both in, but I can't do really do colour work with them no, next to each other. Because they'll just look the same. But uh, I've also got a purple. And depending on whether I want a third colour for like a colour work yoke, I might spin something else. I'm not quite sure what something else. Either I'll buy another colour of this same mix, or I'll find some other fibre that is a merino blend or a something blend that will sort of go with these but yeah I'm pretty pleased I'm spinning for two jumpers at the moment I currently have no spinning on the wheel I thought it's not true I was spinning for three jumpers because there's my grey Gotland but the fibre on that is quite compacted so I'm giving myself a little break because I have plenty of bobbins so I'm just leaving that one bobbin that's full of grey Gotland to you know I don't know how leaving it is going to help because leaving fibre is what makes fibre compact. Yeah. So, you know, it's just going to be hard when it stops. But it's it's compacted over goodness knows how long. 
so I don't know that a couple more months will make a huge difference but yeah so I'm doing that doing jumper spinning I'm doing jumper knitting I'm all about the jumpers right now absolutely is that all you spinning that is all my spinning lovely I've got one bit of spinning to show um this is also from uh, unravel and it is the from job as well and it's the burnt copper uh marine okay can't you see it have you spun so far it's not showing up on the camera yes this is one ply I'm doing a two ply this one is half of it on one bobbin and I'm in the process of spinning the other half which is still on the wheel um it's a nice color I'm going for a color scheme like I don't know if you can tell what with the jumper and this there seems to be a trend yeah um but um I'm also hoping to use it for color work with the green that I bought which is over there somewhere um possibly for mittens or a hat or something like that but that's the plan that's all the spinning though so I've done that and I've started on the second bobbin of that that's about it really I haven't done any spinning for a few days because you know work but it's nice it's a nice color it's a merino so it's a smooth and lovely yeah it's very soft yeah that's it that's all, that's all I've got for spinning thank you uh, stash enhancement. Do you want me to do mine first? Yeah, sure. I can show you the final yarn. Um, both these stash enhancements are slightly spoilery as well for the Hilltop Cloud Time Travellers Club and for the Stephen King Top Yarn Club. Yes. Or like the, the most recent parcels that have gone out for both of them. Yeah. So if one, if you don't want to know what one or both or either of them are, then maybe skip this bit. Anyway, yeah. so this month's Stephen King Top Yarn Club was Needful Things. Um, I'll show you the, this is the doobie that came with it. It also came with some sweets, but I ate those. Um, Needful Things is not one that I know. It's not a book that I've read. But it came with this stitch marker, which is a gun. Oh, well, that's, you know. Bye now, pay later on it. So that's the stitch marker. It came with tea, because, you know, yarn dyes are awesome and all, all, always send tea with their yarns. And then I've got the yummy scrummy yarn, which is going to be the final colour in my shawl. And it is this. And it's so pretty. And it's called Mr. Gaunt Knows Best. I'm guessing that's the guy who runs the shop. But I haven't read that book. So I don't know. Oh, there's a shop as well. That's what Needful Things is. It's like a shop. Oh, okay. Uh, I know that much. So this is the Down okay. Sheepy Lane Stephen King Sock Club. Uh, month, goodness knows how many. Um, and this is the Smooth Sock 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. And it's going to be colour number, last one, six, <laughs> yeah, five. in my shawl. See, that, 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 and then all the pink stuff. So, yeah. Them's my colours. That's why I decided to change to this one instead of the single ply one I had that was a lot darker. Um, because I could put this one after it and it would end with a nice sort of mild, pinky, kind of pastel -y. See, in a lot of ways they're quite similar. You can see they've both got very similar colours in yeah. them. But um, what doesn't show up quite so well on camera is the down sheepy lane one is a bit darker and not quite as sort of pinky. It's a bit browner and, and yellower. darker. So I think together they'll look really good. And I'll be really pleased. It means I have two down sheepy lane yarns in my shawl. Yeah, which I think is pretty cool. Well, you do. Um, you have quite a bit of down sheepy lane yarn. You I do, although. Day. Um, I'm using them all up pretty swiftly. The other thing that I don't have, and I didn't take a picture of, was the shawl that I made out of the shining one because I think I showed it on the podcast. Unblocked. No, I didn't because we it was at your house because. Did I? I'm sure we showed it. No, finished, we must have shown it finished, but, not but it blocked. wasn't blocked. And but we it's now been blocked and set and given to its recipient. But I'll be missing another one anyway because I'm doing one for me. Yeah. So, yeah. I've got my own hair in my mouth now. Um, so I've only got this. And one other skein of Down Sheepy Lane that is still in a skein like this. The rest has all been used in some capacity or another. Um, and I've got bits of it left over, which I'll add to my sock yarn blanket that I haven't done work on for a little while. So maybe that project will have to come out of hiding. It's the Easter holidays next week. I get two weeks off. I'm so excited. Ah! I'm very excited. I'm going to do knitting and spinning and reading books. And possibly other stuff too. Like maybe clean my flat. Yeah. But mostly... of working in a school yeah uh yeah so that's the stephen king stock yarn club 
I'm sure, now I think about it, there must be one due pretty soon. Have you bought one recently? I can't remember. I'm going to look it up on my phone okay. while you talk about yours. Okay. Well, we have uh, joint stash enhancement. Oh, yeah, that's it. true. It is... Oh. Do you want... Uh, I've already just flashed it on the screen. And this came quite recently, so if you are a member of the Hilltop Cloud... Well, Cloud I've already Club, given the disclaimer. Yeah, nice. I know. So it's but fine. You've had yours for a, a little while. I was only came yesterday or maybe the day before. So this is the fibre. It's called Kelly Green. It's uh, green merino and some orange, and it's really pretty. It is, let me tell you. 12.5% tussa silk. 72.5% super fine merino and 25% ramboule. Uh, Which is not a pudding. No. It's not a pudding. I think you're thinking of creme brulee. Oh no, needful things. That's still up there. Okay. Um, and it's based on St. Patrick's Day and the history of the Irish flag with the green and the orange. And allegedly there's some white in here, but I cannot actually see any white. So maybe I'll have to, you know, pull it apart a bit. Look at that, but it's ever so soft. I've never spun with Rambouillet before. Oh no, there's a little, there's a tiny little bit of white. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so that'll be interesting. It feels very soft, so I'm presuming it's a a soft sheep or a soft wool. Uh, but apparently the is it the green comes from something in France to do with the French Revolution, which is to do, I don't know. It, it was something interesting and historical that I've now forgotten. Well, she puts the notes for her colours and stuff up on her website, doesn't she? Yes. Can you put a link in the show notes to it? Oh, yeah, I could do that. And then you can read it. Well, not, not you, you've got your right. Yeah. You. <laughs> yeah. It's very interesting every week. Every week, oh. every month. Uh, you know, getting a little tiny history lesson about colours and what they represent so yeah this is the march edition and oh it's not wet uh i've not spun any of the club colorways this year so i should probably get on that and spin something i don't know i have no idea what i'm going to do with this maybe maybe spin it from the fold yeah they do work quite nicely yeah. together and add it to my um jean -Pierre. Or spin it short forward draw, add it to this jumper. Who knows? All possibilities. Or spin it into something else and not add it to a jumper. Or start spinning for a fourth jumper. If great. I'm feeling, you know, entirely insane. We still need to like do a project where we like spin it for each other. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what we should do. We should like take our for one of them, we should take our half and then spin it as we see fit and then the other one gets the yarn <laughs> does that make sense okay so i spin you spin and make your yarn so it's done finished yeah and, and give then it to give it to me and then i will spin my yarn so it's finished and then give it to you okay because you... even if we both spin it the same technique we both spin differently yeah so it would be a different yeah are we gonna secretly spin these things or can we spin them while we're together? We should probably, like, discuss. Because okay. maybe, like, I don't know. Because if we both did it exactly the same way, then that wouldn't be quite so yeah. exciting. If we both, like, we're going to spin it sh short, forward draw, and chain ply it, then, yeah. you know. Well, I can long draw. So you can't either... to learn. You I might learn. learn on this. Ooh, so that'd be good. That is your very pretty back. But it's already in a bat, and it'd be easy to um, roll like it up. Oh, it's so soft. It feels so soft. It looks like soy silk, the colour of it. I still don't know what I'm going to spin this into. I just feel like if I spin this short draw, it will go very thin and like use, lose its brightness. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I spin quite thinly. And I'm not really good at chain flying. It tends to go a bit stringy, and I don't. I want this to stay in this colour pattern. So I don't know. I could spin it as a single, I guess, couldn't I? Yeah. And make her something. Oh, shit. Who knows? Anyway. I think that is. That's about it. Pretty much everything. You can, you're going to do your last little bit. Yes. Please do enter the giveaway to win. 
Hang on, I've got the ball. This yarn. It looks very pink on the camera. Hang on, get that, get the thing out because I'm turning it very pink. It's not pink, it's red. Yeah. It is, it's, it's, yeah, it there looks a lot lighter. brighter. Reds, but it, it is uh, red. Got a tiny bit of black in there? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very pretty. A, yeah. If you don't think, see, that's very pink. Yeah, it's, it's not, not pink. That pink. If you if you're not a fan of pink, don't let that put you off no. entering the giveaway because it is uh, not pink. No, and it's lovely yarn. So that's pink. Yeah, and that's red, but they look kind of similar there, though they're not. Yeah, blame anyway. blame the lighting. Anywho, yes. yes, enter that on the Ravelry group. Please join the Ravelry group as well. Um, that's it, I think. Yeah. Are we done? Yeah. Have we shown all the stuff? Yeah. Awesome. Hopefully, we will be back in a couple of weeks with our regularly yeah. scheduled schedule. Yeah. Well, it will be Easter Sunday. Easter holidays, so. Oh, we can do it during the week then. Yeah. Because we'll be having family meals on Easter Sunday. Oh, yes, yes, we are. So we will be out. Well, a meal. Yeah. I don't know how. Uh, many meals but I will be on holiday, thankfully. And yeah. so we'll do it during the holidays yeah. or something. Excellent. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Bye.